JJ. Even if you get like the lightest weight plant plates that you can, it's still heavy. This is Will Stewart. He knows me. His dad's really cool. We're introducing you to everybody on the internet. Oh, hey, what's up, internet? See, like, the hard thing is, is when you got, like, a bunch of guns, especially a bunch of them being AR-15s, and then Darren says, like, oh, dude, we gotta bring some AR-15s so that we can film this commercial. So, no, what AR-15s to, like, grab? Because there's, like, a lot of good options, so. Tried to go kind of just with the classics, I guess. Well, everybody here, I'll stick this thing from. Turbo, baby. I can't believe Will was too scared to ride with us. I asked him if you want to ride with us, and he's like, hey, I, I don't know. I'm like, I thought he was into this kind of stuff, and he, like, was legit scared. I mean, he does our social media and stuff, but I don't know. Once he saw it, there was, like, belt fence and gear and stuff all on a Humvee, he just like... Well, then his pants and t-shirt probably get dirty sitting on your seats. Yeah, no, he really, uh... Yeah, it was weird. Never seen somebody act like that. Yeah. Weird, it was really weird. That's how wide these things are. There he is. Yuppie truck. <laughs> Nah, man, you're all good. And you're driving the most American truck out there. Oh yeah, Ford. So yeah, like a Taco Bell, of course, didn't, didn't ask nothing, but just because I was driving the Humvee, then it was like, oh yeah, we threw some, uh, some more free food in there for you guys. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. And then I was like thinking about it, I was like, wait, hold on, why? And then it was like, oh, for your service. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not in the service, this thing's privately owned, like everything. And they're just like, oh, well, we can't really take the food back now that it's been in the car, it's company policy. Gotta keep it. I got my boots, JJ. I'm stuck in these. It's not even How do you think good that company's gonna feel if they see this and they're like, I'm stuck in these. Like, I mean, Ulta, Ultima makes like really kick ass shoes and really kick ass boots. I wish I had my Ultima boots here. But the Ultima shoes are just gonna have to, they're gonna have to cut the mustard. I don't ever wear long pants. This is new for me. You got your Coons ass? Yeah, I got my Coons ass patch. <laughs> Told me he didn't know what it means, but he thought it was funny. And he gave me one. I won't tell you his full name, because I don't think he'd appreciate that, because he was that kind of guy. His name was Jim. I'm not getting hit with this brass. <laughs> We're shooting this close. My face is right here, and his brass is going just like right past my face. If we were using a traditional M16 or M4, my face would be bleeding like crazy right now, and my neck would be really burned. Um, not that I want to sound like a baby that I don't want that to happen, but I, I don't want that to happen. So what we have here is an M4 without the Johnson Customs shell deflector on it. I'm going to kind of demonstrate how well, it throws brass. With the shell deflector, again, on the exact same weapon. Ooh. I didn't flinch, though. Didn't flinch. 
but didn't flinch. I didn't flinch. Put this part in the episode. Give it a good smack on the butt. Okay, this time we're using an M4, the exact same firearm. We're gonna go ahead and uh, use the M4, the exact same firearm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys can see, so when we're doing stuff on purpose, it's a lot harder than when we're just out here having a good time making episode stuff. Okay, so we got an M4 with a shell deflector on it. I'll show you guys how well this thing works. Ken Bob was not getting pelted in the face with brass. That it was not. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Sicario. Again. I can't Why don't just both bite. stand here and then just get a good shot of us dumping and killing this guy with the handguns? Everybody always thinks that we have such a good time all the time. Yeah. And we're gonna go shooting all the time. And it's like, it's they true. Can. Exactly. It is true. We do. We don't ever really work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, we would work all the time and never get to do this. Yeah, have to clutch our asses. And nobody else could do anything except for Alyssa and Christian. And Oliver. And Oliver. It's slippery up here. Hopefully you don't get your humpy stuck. Yep. This road would make a cool shot of the humpy coming up all funny. We're gonna like shoot the uh, steel that's like way down there with our pistols, maybe. Or at least gonna shoot next to him. <laughs> Enough to scare him. Yeah, we're gonna scare the steel. Ken Bob, you can go first. That target's really teeny. Well, uh... I don't know how far this is, but it's far. It is pretty far. It takes quite a bit for that stuff to get there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I could hit it first. We're also shooting heavy shots, frangible ammunition. They're made right here in Sweet Home, Oregon. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Local, local ammo, local dudes. Love supporting local companies. Yep. Okay, it's my turn before you go again. It's not fair. I'm just like right next to it on every shot. Yeah, it's just, you're dancing around it. That one that's right behind that tree, I could hit first try, no. We'll go for it. Okay. Right off to the right. That was low. Way right. Is that last one to hit? I don't think so. Uh. There we that go. That was it. Woo! <laughs> RMR cheater. Whoa, yeah.
Okay, so one thing that's really cool about that ammunition, uh, amongst some other lead-free options, if you look at how clean the inside of the brass is, like it's still brass colored inside, uh, it doesn't get turned gray like it would with uh, lead ammunition. So just nice and clean and everything, which means it's also nice and clean stuff that you're breathing. So you might consider switching to either lead-free or finding some way to keep all the bad stuff out of your body. Like safety glasses keep the bad stuff out of your eyeballs. <laughs> and Ear Pro keeps the bad stuff out of your ears. We're about safety. Yes. One thing that's really cool about Northwest Arsenal Indoor Shooting Range, Eugene, Oregon, you can actually shoot this saw M249 you know, you put a 200 round box in it, you can shoot it however much you want. We got plenty of spare barrels for it. I forgot the panel mount for the saw, so we're not gonna use the turret the way it was designed to be. inside my plate carrier. Wouldn't be happening if I had a John's Custom Shell Deflector on this thing. Backing up first try, I couldn't hardly turn around because of my body armor. Just going off of the mirrors, back the body up to the body of the trailer, and I am right over the hitch. I just backed up a little too far. <laughs> People are gonna wonder how, how you stretched your arms that far, JJ. A few years ago, I was welding something and Nikki was watching, or well, she was watching, but she was like hanging out while I was welding. And she might have been just like looking at her phone or something like that, and I'm just welding in the corner of her eye. She knows not to stare at the, at the arc, but didn't think that, you know, in your peripheral vision, it'd be a big deal. She wakes up at like three o'clock in the morning, with like her eyes just burning red, you know, just unbearable pain. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Damn. So, I know everybody's probably wondering what's Jim do for Northwest Arsenal because you never see him working. Not that any of our episodes have anything to do with us working at the store. But everybody knows that he pretty much just dicks off all the time. Well, this is this is why right here. He gets to, gets to help his cool little brothers build cool little race cars. And then he gets to just have fun on his own time all the time. and. I don't know if that explains it very well. So the goal is to get the roll cage to close to the top of the car as, as possible, really. And the thing is, if you do that, then you can't get your welder up on top of the thing. So what you have to do is you kind of get the roll cage mocked up into the car, and then we drop the roll cage down through the floor, weld the top, push it back up, and then we build these plates here that holds it up into place. But in order to meet racing spec, the welds have to go all the way around. Otherwise, they, you know, they would just break. People probably know we've got Nathan Sykes, who's a good friend of ours, who's into old school choppers and stuff. He let me ride his down the road and back. It was hooked, you know? As soon as it, it, it's such a cool feeling riding a motorcycle on the road. Like, I've ridden dirt bikes my whole life, but then you, something about that was so cool. I was like, I gotta get one. So I'm looking around, looking for the right deal or whatever, and, and one pops up on eBay. Hold on. Years ago, this is my old motorcycle. This is before and after, but I never finished it. I, I, I uh, decided that it wasn't for me and, and, I, and I got rid of it. So now here I am trying to build that exact same motorcycle, only I'm gonna finish it this time and actually ride it. And uh, when I saw this bike on eBay, I was like, that's exactly what I want. It's the exact same bike this was, only a couple years off, uh, perfect. The bike's in New Jersey and uh, and I was like, nah, this, this is the one. So I bid on it, and next thing you know, uh, I went. So then I got to rent shipping and get the thing over here, which took forever. So I talked to the guy who, who I got it from. He says the bike had apparently come from Kentucky, 
and then from Kentucky it ended up in Pennsylvania and sat in a barn for like since the 1980s and he says it hasn't ran since as far as he knows and uh, he bought it and then of course flipped it and sold it to me so as far as I know it's very possible that this bike hasn't been ridden in my entire lifetime so it'd be kind of cool to be the first person in the past 30 plus years to ride this thing once it's finished so So from the factory, this motorcycle would come with suspension on the rear. This would be what used to be, you know, here. And then the springs would hook up to here, and then the rear end can travel and be comfortable. I bought a rear end kit that make, you know, makes a hardtail uh, conversion, but I wasn't totally happy with uh, with what it looks like. So. This was part of the frame right here, and then this was part of this subframe here, and it would they would bolt bolt together like that. Well, to me, bolting together doesn't look you know factory. So what I've done here is, is cut this off and cut this off, and then spliced in my own tubes there to make the thing look more like it was built this way. And I've also done a bunch of modifications up here, added these bars, all that kind of stuff, and trying to make it look. Uh, as factory as possible, but at the same time, custom. My goal is it, it so custom that it looks factory, is what I'm going for. So the frame is welded to this jig here that goes all the way back to where the axle mount is holding everything level. So the axle is gonna, will sit level, which means the wheels will sit level. And then it's also making sure that the back of the bike is pointing directly towards the neck of the bike so that you're not riding the motorcycle down the road sideways or all you know cockeyed or something like that. So that's why this is hooked to that. I'm gonna finish doing some welds on this, pop it off, we'll be sticking Homer's bike on here. And it's gonna be his turn. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you like it. Go ahead and click that like button. And then I wanna go ahead and see how good of a shot you are and let's see if you can hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of our cool content over on Facebook and Instagram.